Hi everyone, my name is Alejandra Corbat. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm going to show you a very useful function. It's quite old, but it's very useful. Um, it's the function aggregate. It has been around since Excel 2010 and Excel for Mac 2011. So it has been around for a while, but it's very useful. Every single time that I show it to someone, I receive the same comment. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know about it. So that for that reason, I thought it might be worth it to share. I hope you find it useful as well. And if you knew about it, uh, I hope you are still using it <laughs> because it's really very useful. Excellent. This function has many options. It's very uh, versatile, let's say. Uh, but today we're going to see only two examples, two applications. Uh, so I'm going to start with the first one. I have here my range of data where I have one column for the items and one column for the sales. The sales has amounts and some errors in between. So there are times that we have a set of data with a very long, long range, and we want to add the values and we don't know exactly what those errors are, but sometimes it doesn't really matter too much. I just want the total ignoring those errors. Well, in that case, let me show you what happens if I try to add these values, including the errors. So I'm going to go to the, uh, the end of my range and I'm going to say equal. So I'm going to open parentheses and let's say I'm going to select the whole range from D3 to D17, close parentheses, enter. Of course, I receive an error, uh, the error value, right? Okay, I'm going to delete that. And now let's use the aggregate function, which is fantastic. So I'm going to say equal, aggregate. I'm going to press tab to select grab that uh, from the options. And you can see here that there are so many options, right? Average, count, count, count A, max, min, etc. The one that I need is the sum. So we can double click uh, on the nine, or I can just enter nine, comma, or I could just double click there too. Now the next uh, argument is the options. I have all these options, I can ignore nested subtotals and aggregate functions, rows, subtotals, aggregate. The one that I'm looking for is this ignore error values. I'm going to double click there now, which is number six. I'm going to press comma. And now it's asking me for an array. Well, my array will be the content with my numbers and my errors. I'm going to close parentheses and I'm going to press enter. And now we have the total of this amount ignoring the errors. I could have done this also manually if I say equal sum. I'm going to do it just on the side. And I'm going to select the first range of data, press control, select the next range, press, press and hold control. And I'm going to select the other two ranges with amount. And I'm going to close parentheses. You can see how long the formula is, has become. I'm going to press enter. It gives me the same information. The thing is that if I leave it as is, Every time that I fix one of those errors, I will need to manually add the sum function. In the case of the aggregate, it will update, it will update automatically. So let's say I'm going to replace this value for 5,000. And I'm going to press enter. Now you can see that my total using the aggregate function changes to 54,000. In the other hand, my total from the sum function is not including those 5,000. I will need to add one more item at the end, comma, and I'm going to select that cell, and I'm going to press enter, and then get updated, which is not practical, right? So for that reason, aggregate. When you have this type of issues, aggregate instead of sum. The next example is what happens when I have hidden rows. In this case, here I have same thing, one column with the items, one column with the sales. It doesn't have errors. But here you will notice that I have some rows hidden from row 5 to row 10. And here I have more rows hidden from row 14 to row uh, 29. Those are hidden. And here I have also from row 43 to 52. And I can unhide so you can see the information that I have just here, hidden, right? Uh, let me just hide them again. Excellent. What happens if I add this using the sum function? Well, I'm going to say equal sum, open parenthesis. I'm going to select my range from D3 to D57, which is this line, right? This row. I'm going to close parenthesis. I'm going to press enter. 
It says that my total is 271,292. But if I select these cells, I can see at the bottom that my total really is 56,732. It's because my function sum is adding all the items visible and non-visible. That is not what I want. I only want the visible items to be added. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to say equal aggregate again. I, let me move this a little bit here, and let me do this again. Aggregate, perfect. Open parentheses, and same thing. I'm going to look for the sum. Double click there, or just provide the nine, comma. This time, I'm going to ignore hidden rows. So I'm going to say that I want option five, comma. What is the rate? The array is from D3 to D57, close parenthesis, press enter, and now I have the 56,732. I'm going to say equal here on the side, and I'm going to say sum, so you can see the difference, and I'm going to select the same range from D3 to D D57, close parenthesis, enter. You can see that it's telling me that it's 271,000. What happens if I un uh, unhide some of the rows, let's say from row uh, 5 to row 10, let's unhide those ones. Well, now my total using the aggregate function tells me that I have 81,000. Of course, I have more visible lines for that reason. My total has increased. And my sum is exactly the same because it keeps adding visible and non-visible sets. I hope you found this information useful. Did you like it? Please give the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, share with anybody that you believe can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.